Good afternoon. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the decision whether or not you want to lease a car or buy a car. And the lease versus purchase decision is a very common one in regular day-to-day -day life um, in personal finance, but also in corporate finance. Many assets that firms rely upon can either be leased or purchased. And in this example, we're going to outline the framework for how you decide which one of those is going to be the better deal. So let's take an example that you want to get a 2014 Audi A5 Cabriolet. Uh, you've decided that you want it um, and you're going to get it and you don't really care if you're going to lease it or if you're going to buy it because to you, you're driving it, it's your car, it's the same thing. So you really have two choices, right? You can lease it or you can buy it. When it comes to leasing, you're going to need to pay $6,241 down and each month for the next three years or 36 months, you're going to pay $546. Um, if you buy it, you've got a negotiated price of $44,500. In the text example, they call this the capitalized cost. I'm leaving the MSRP out of this for simplification. Um, and if you wanted to borrow the money to buy it, you'd have to pay 3.9%. So that 3.9% is our hurdle rate. That's our discount rate. It would be our cost of capital. It's what we would have to pay to borrow the money. And you would make those payments for 36 months. Um, also, if you buy the car, you'll need to pay tax and title and destination fees, all that, and that'll cost you $2,670. And at the end of the time, you'll have a car and you'll own it, and you'll be able to sell it, if you want, for $37,825. That is your estimate based on looking at Kelly Blue Book values for Audis that are three years old. So your goal here is to figure out which is the most cost-effective form of financing. Is it going to be more cost-effective for you to lease the vehicle with those monthly payments, or is it going to be more cost-effective for you to buy it? So let's take a look at some of our value drivers. I've set our value drivers up right here, and here's what we're going to do. We are going to start with the negotiated price for the car. So the negotiated price for the car is 44500 Our destination charges are $2,670. And if we were going to buy it, we would have a hurdle rate, right, a percentage that we would need to pay of 3.9% per year. At the end of the three years, we'd own a vehicle. And that vehicle would be worth our estimate of $37,825. Now for the lease. At the lease, if you decide to lease the car, you'll need to pay $6,241 today and then $546 each month for the next three years. So now I'm going to take these values and I'm going to plug them into our cash flow table. And so I'd like to be able to see all 36 months in one screen, so I'm going to shrink the size of the text and I'm going to scroll down. Okay, that shrinks it, and here we go. We'll get rid of the value drivers when we're ready to do the analysis, but for now we need it. So let's take, for example, or let's start with our lease cash flows. If we, buy the, if we lease the vehicle, we're going to need to spend $6,241 now, and then for the next 36 months, we'll need to make a monthly payment of $546. I gave that an absolute reference because I want to just grab that handle and double click and have it fill in every cell from month one to month 36. And if I scroll down, you'll see that it did that. Now let's compare the purchase cash flows. Well, if we decide we want to buy the car and we're going to buy it today, it's going to cost $44,500 and that would be a negative outflow as well. But then, the nice thing about buying it is that you've got a zero monthly payment, right, for the next 36 months. So I'm going to grab that handle and double click, and it's going to fill in all the way to month 36. However, the purchase cash flow isn't our only cash flow that we need to take into account when buying the vehicle. We also have destination charges and taxes. So really, before we can drive the car off the lot, we're going to need to pay that negotiated price plus all our destination charges. And at the end of our term owning this vehicle, we're going to have a vehicle that's worth something. It's going to be worth $37,825 and we'll be able to have that as a cash inflow. So this column here, differential cash flow. The differential cash flow is, as it sounds, the difference between the two cash flows. And the significance of it is this. If you're looking, you're standing here at time zero, and you've got two choices. 
you either need to come up with $6,241 or you need to come up with $47,170. Looking at it that way, the lease sounds like a whole lot better of a deal. And the amount by which it is a better deal is equal to the difference between those two cash flows. Let me show you what I mean. We could pay $6,200 or we could pay $47,000. So at month zero, it's going to feel like a cash benefit. It's going to be like a bonus of $40,929. We'll get the car and we won't have to pay 40 grand. Woo wee, right? However, in month one, then it starts kicking in. Oh, you're going to have a payment of $546. Whereas had you owned it and paid cash, you wouldn't have that. So I can take this and right click and bring it all the way down and it'll give me my differential cash flows for every single month. And down here in the last month, you would have leased it and you would have made those payments. But in the last month, having leased it, instead of buying it, you're going to get $38,371 less than you would have had you bought it. This looks a little bit like a loan, right? At time zero, you don't have to pay $40,000, $929, in exchange for future payments of $546. It's almost like you made a down payment, borrowed the rest, and then made payments off, right? And then at the end, unfortunately, since you didn't actually own it, the difference between having received $37,000 and having to pay $546, ouch. So like a loan, we can calculate the cost of the loan or the cost of the lease using internal rate of return. Because we have monthly payments, we're going to get a monthly internal rate of return, which will then need to use the effective annual interest rate formula, 1 plus the monthly rate, raised to the 12th power, because there's 12 months in a year, and then minus 1 just to get rid of that 1 and get us back down to an interest rate. So let's try that. I'm going to scroll up. We're going to start, the first thing we're going to do is calculate the monthly IRR, then we're going to annualize it, and then we're going to compare that annualized IRR for our, to our alternative cost of financing. That's our hurdle rate. And then we're going to utilize that IF command to figure out what we should do, what is going to be the better deal for us if we want to buy the vehicle. So here we go. Internal rate of return. The internal rate of return is 1.163%. I'm going to double click on that because that seems high, but it's right. 1.163%, right, sure, it's better than 3.09%, but this is 1.163% per month. To turn that into annual terms, right, it's going to be more than 12 times that. I'm already getting the feeling that this lease is a bad deal. So I'll use the formula. 1 plus my monthly rate raised to the number of months per year minus 1. And I get an annual interest rate of 14.89%. And if I were to borrow the money in order to undertake this loan, I would only have to pay 3.9%. That's my hurdle rate, or that's my alternative cost of financing. So the lease is sort of like having a loan with a 14.89 interest rate, but if I wanted to, I could buy the car for an interest rate of 3.9%. So clearly, it's better to buy the car. You want to buy the vehicle using the least expensive cost of financing that you can achieve, that you can attain. So we'll say if the cost of leasing is greater than the alternative cost of financing, we're going to purchase the car. And that's because it's cheaper to purchase it than it is to lease it. I have to pause this and I will be right back because I'm waiting for the cable guy. Hold on. All right. So where we left off is that if D58 is greater, if D57 is greater than D58, that means the cost of leasing is greater than the cost of buying, then we'll purchase it. However, if that happens to be false, we'll lease. So the way this if command works is that you give it a logical test, and that logical test is D57 in relationship to D58. So D57 is the annualized IRR, the cost of the lease, 
and D58 is our cost of financing, 3.9%. So if it's more expensive to lease than it is to buy, that is if D57 is greater than D58, we'll purchase it, otherwise we'll lease. I'll hit enter and it's going to tell us that we need to purchase it. So thanks for my unprofessional pausing and I hope you have happy calculating. Bye.